I've got another question here. And this question is by Unati Lubisi. Rachel also asked a similar question like this. And Kiriboni, I don't have your, your surname though. But you also asked, and you're asking me a lot about KC. You're like, Tobile, what is KC? Because I see you've asked me, what happens when KC is greater than one? What happens when KC is less than one? When is KC exothermic? When is KC endothermic? So before I answer all those questions, and we're going to start moving into calculations of concentration, KC value, and so forth. But I want us to actually look at when and how KC actually occurs. So let me use, uh, let's use Harbour process. I mean, that's the, the one most people uh, use, and you will do it in chemical systems. So you guys, I'm coming back to your question. I just want to make sure you guys understand how and why and when KC will shift and so forth. So if I've got nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas, these two lines here tell me equilibrium. Equilibrium is related to Le Chatelier. And here's also another definition that you guys need to know. And when this is the harbor process, we know Guti delta H will be negative 92. That's more or less. And that will be kilojoules. Let me not take shortcuts. This will be in kilojoules. Negative 92. Can I just write here? Kilojoules and so forth. Now already just by looking at this, this type of reaction, this negative then already tells me, remember, delta H tells us whether it's exothermic or whether it's endothermic. Now let's see. If I have delta H, greater than zero, or I have delta H, which is less than zero, which is less than zero, to be left, which is less than zero. If delta H is greater than zero, it's endothermic. If it's less than zero, then it's exothermic, right? So in this case, we can see that it's less than zero, it's exothermic. Most of you guys still struggle with this. I just wanna teach you guys this quickly. This means smaller than, and this is bigger than. Please don't confuse the two. Smaller than, bigger than. So in this case, we've got negative 92, which is smaller than, meaning this is an exothermic reaction. Now, what I always teach my children in my class, when you get a reaction like this, now whether it being endothermic or whether being, it being exothermic, I will add the heat as a product. What does this mean? Endothermic means it holds in heat in. So heat is required inside the system for it to actually take part. And in most cases, if you actually do the actual experiment and you're doing an endothermic reaction and you actually hold the container, it's so warm or it's so cold and so forth. So I would add it. So in this case, we know that heat is being released because it's exothermic. You are exhaling, right? And when you exhale, you can actually feel your hands becoming warm. So I would add my heat on this side. So if I'm adding my heat, I know it's an exothermic reaction, but now, guys, I want you guys to take this step by step and you can, you'll see the next questions that we'll answer, it will be as easy as pi. What will happen if I add some N2? Now think about it. If I'm adding N2 the whole time into the system, I'm adding more and more of the reactants. Now we are trying to bake. I'm adding more and more reactants the ingredients of the cake, what is going to happen? More and more cakes are going to be formed, right? So the system will shift, the system will shift in that direction to make, it'll make more NH3. If I add hydrogen gas, the same is true. If you are adding more and more reactants, more and more cakes are going to be formed. So more, we're going to have more and more product. So the same is true for this one. But now, what if, let me see. If we add, say, if okay, tops, but what happens now if I add NH3? Now I want you guys to think about it. Remember, the system is trying to balance itself. If I'm adding more and more cakes, but nothing is happening to the, re, to the reactants or my ingredients, it means that my product must start dissociated or disintegrating to make more of this. So the system will shift in this direction. Because if more and more of this is occurring, I know if I was to um, separate these two, I'll end up with nitrogen gas and I'll end up with hydrogen gas. More and more of this, if we move it to the opposite direction, I will be forming more and more of this. And the same is true if it's being removed. But now things get really spicy when we talk about temperature. What will happen if we increase? What will happen if we increase the temperature? So now I want you guys to look, look here. We already have a system. We are in 
increasing the temperature. We are adding more. So I like speaking about heat, whether it being exothermic or being endothermic as a product, because I want you guys to think about it as a human being, when you breathe, you can actually feel the warmth. So it's not tangible, but you can feel it. So it is a product by it that you get when you exhale. Right, it's the same thing when you fart. When you fart, most of us form, fart uh, like methane gas and so forth. That is a product when you're actually farting. You cannot touch it, but you can definitely smell it. And it's a product. The same thing when we talk about heat. So when you increase temperature, talking about heat, we are adding more and more temperature on this side. What must the system do? To, because now on this side, there's so much temperature and there's so much heat. The system needs to shift in such a manner as to come back and balance. So if there's more heat on this side, the, temp the system will rather take off some of this heat and the system will shift into the direction where there is no heat. So the, the system will then shift away from the heat. So it'll shift in, in the other direction and it shifts in this, in this direction so it is consumed. So it is consumed and when heat is being consumed, we know what to then we move from an exothermic reaction, the, the reverse reaction is then favored. And the same is true if, if temperature is reduced. The mo one of the difficult ones is when we talk about pressure. So if you increase, uh, increase volume, if we increase volume, and I, want to, I just want to write decrease here. Increase, decrease volume. Now, before I continue with this, I want you guys to get uh, a picture in your mind, right? Most of you guys don't get this one wrong because it sounds right, but sometimes it's not always right. When we, like for example, if, when we increase the volume, you make something bigger. I want you guys to think about gas molecules and I'm going to give you guys an example. You think of something bigger. So I want you guys, I want you now to think about what you've asked me, right? When what happens when you increase volume and decrease volume? When you increase volume, you are making something bigger and the space between the things or the particles will then increase. So it means you increase the volume and you reduce the pressure. Think of a balloon. If we have a balloon and I put some rice in the balloon and I don't inflate it and I just move it around like this, you can hear the rice uh, move around. And the, the, the space between the rice is not so much. But once I increase the volume by reducing the pressure, right? You can, the, the rice will still move, but it's not very likely that they will hit each other because there's so much space between them, right? It's like this whole COVID thing, you know, social distancing and stuff, have some space around you and all that stuff. So, but once you reduce the balloon, you reduce the volume, the balloon gets big, gets smaller, the pressure gets bigger. So it's vice versa between the two. So now if we increase volume, what I would do, what I teach my kids, when you increase volume, you decrease pressure you decrease the pressure. And on this side, when you decrease the volume, you increase pressure. You increase the pressure of the system. Now, the nice thing with this one, or not the, really the nice thing, but something very interesting about these two is that once the volume is increased and the pressure is decreased, the system will shift in such a way. So it will shift in a direction where there are more moles, more Mold. So if you're increasing the volume and you take, you're making, putting more and more space between these particles, the system needs to counter that. How does it counter it? It will go to where the part is at. So it will go to where there are more moles so that it fills up the space between the two. And the opposite is true when we decrease the volume. When we decrease the volume by making it smaller, by increasing the pressure, now it feels so congested and it's suffocating. Now the system needs to counter this by doing the opposite. So what is it going to do? It's going to go to the side where there's less people, so it's going to reduce some of the space between the particles. So it will move or it will shift in a direction where there is less moles. Now these are a lot of questions that actually come up a lot. But based on this um, equation that we were given, this is in how I would look at equation. Now, what I teach my kids, and I know for now it's going to be, be a little bit tricky and it might take a little bit of time, but what I teach my kids, when you get an equation, they ask you about KC or Le Chatsi and whatever, write down everything and then you answer the questions. And you'll see as you get used to it and as you practice, you're going to get all the way up.